Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of microwave engineering. In today's session, we are going to learn about waveguide attenuators. Okay. So first we need to know what is an attenuator. So what are these attenuators? Attenuators are microwave devices, which are mostly used in a bend setup or a test setup. Uh, and a microwave signal is made to pass through that. So whenever a microwave signal passes through that particular attenuator, what happens to the signal? Okay. So the main purpose of using a waveguide attenuators or an attenuator is to alter the power. So mostly suppose uh, if the power in a microwave signal is more, okay. So this particular microwave signal is made to move through the attenuator such that the power of that particular microwave signal reduces without affecting the quality of the signal, okay. So mostly we can state or put this particular statement in such a way that attenuator is a microwave device which is mainly used to alter the power present in the microwave signal flowing through that particular uh, attenuator without affecting the quality of the signal. Now, these attenuators are of various types. Okay. So, let's see what are those. So, so, these are the main two types of attenuators. One is resistive card and rotary vane attenuators. Okay. So, one is the resistive card attenuator and the second one is rotary vane attenuator. Okay. Now, let's see the first attenuator, which is nothing but resistive card attenuator. So, again, this particular resistive card attenuator is classified into two. One is fixed resistive card attenuators as well as second one is variable resistive card attenuators. Now, what do you mean by fixed resistive card attenuators and variable resistive card attenuators? We are going to see now, okay? See. So, coming to the fixed resistive card attenuators, you can see an attenuator over here, okay, in which there is a bump. Uh, this, let us say, this is a attenuator in which you can see a bump kind of structure, okay, going through this particular waveguide attenuator okay so this is fixed okay so that's why uh, this particular bump over here which is uh, installed in this particular waveguide is completely uh, fixed okay so this particular fixed one is called as fixed resistive card attenuators okay so what does it resisting we are going to see right now okay see in the fixed resistive card attenuators, the resistive card is tapered at the both ends. Okay. So if you have already seen, we have seen, right? It is tapered at both the ends. It is somewhat like a half semi circle. Okay. Next. So the tapering of the card or this particular bump, okay, helps in maintaining low standing wave ratio at the input as well as both uh, the inputs and the output ports, which are useful for especially waveguide bands, okay? So this will, this particular tapering or the smooth structure in the bumps will be maintaining the um, standing wave uh, uh, ratios with respect to the inputs as well as output ports of the waveguide bands, okay? So in order to achieve the maximum attenuation, okay? That means the power can be mostly reduced. In order to achieve the maximum attenuation, the card is, which is placed, okay? So the bump-like structure which is uh, placed is parallel to the electric field and at the center of the waveguide, okay? So the, the structure, what you see over there, it acts as a speed breaker, okay? For vehicles, we will be using some sort of speed breakers, right? In order to reduce the speed of the vehicles, similarly, Okay, so this particular structure is placed in middle of the or center of the waveguide such that uh, it alters this particular uh, at or the attenuates this particular signal. Okay, so and along with that, it also is parallel to the electric field. Okay, so this particular field is mostly at the maximum at the dominant mode. Okay, dominant mode we already know, right? Okay. So it is denoted by T10, okay? So in this type of attenuators, the amount of attenuation provided will be functioning with respect to the frequency. 
as the frequency goes high and lows okay so particularly the power present in that particular signal also moves high and lows okay so this particular uh, attenuators will alter that particular attenuation or the power with respect to the microwave signal with respect to this frequency flowing through that particular microwave signal okay so what we need to know is this is a particular fixed resistive card attenuator which will be having a bump like or tapered like structure which is installed in the center of the waveguide okay so whenever if uh, this particular wave or the signal passes uh, through that particular tapered kind of thing okay so the attenuation occurs and mostly the attenuation uh, will be with respect to the frequency involved in that particular microwave signal and this particular tapered structure will be always parallel to the electric field okay and and it will also will be maximum in the dominant mode but the main disadvantage is as there is an alter in the frequency the power also gets altered automatically with respect to the microwave signal okay now let's see uh, the what this particular variable uh, card resist uh, attenuators does okay so this is fixed right so there are will be somewhat some sort of limitation so uh, based on this we have come up with an uh, variable kind of thing where this particular tapered structure can all can be uh, manually uh, given as an input based on the attenuation required now let's see what is the variable kind of thing so the next comes the variable resistive card attenuators in this we will be having a waveguide which is uh, fixed to a small cut okay so this is a small cut uh, in the waveguide on which there is a uh, tapered resistance card okay which can be movable so if you see over here there is a cut over here through which this tapered card can get inside and there is a movable slot over there okay so this particular cut is nothing but considered as the non radiating slot and this particular tapered resistance card can move inside as well as outside according to the requirement okay so this is considered as the variable uh, resistive card attenuators okay suppose a small amount of uh, a tapered resistor card is inserted okay so the attenuation may be minimum okay so based on the required uh, power to be altered we will be uh, using this particular tapered resistive card through the non radiating slots according to our uh, requirement okay now so this particular variable resistive card attenuators are also called as flap attenuators okay you can see a flap kind of structure right okay so as we are uh, uh, moving that particular type of resistive card up and down okay it can also be considered as flap attenuators okay so the resistance card enters into the waveguide through the slot as i have already said this particular resistive card enters into the a uh, waveguide through the slot provided by this particular non radiating uh, uh slot okay so by absorbing the portion of the wave this particular wall also will be absorbing the portion of the wave okay now there is a hinge arrangement there is an hinge arrangement used to change the depth okay so this is what i have already said right so there is an hinge arrangement this particular hinge arrangement is used to change the depth of penetration okay so based on this particular hinge arrangement the depth of the penetration will be done and the amount of attenuation changes from 0 decibel to the uh, 30 decibels okay so this is the mostly attenuation can be done only up to 30 decibels so next comes next comes the attenuator is called as rotary when attenuators okay so if you see the diagram over here there is a flute kind of structure a cylindrical structure which is again segmented into several parts the first part is the input transition the second part is the fixed section the mid part is the rot rotatable section fourth part is the fixed section again and the fifth one is the output transition okay so at the input transition we will be giving the e vector and the output transition okay we will be getting 
cos square theta m with respect to e vector. Okay. Now, what is this cos square theta m? We are going to see in the further slides. Okay. So, the essential parts of a rotary vane attenuator device are one is uh, two, right? Okay. One is fixed one and another one is uh, ro rotatory waveguide sections. Okay. So, as I have already shown you the parts of this particular uh, rotary vane, okay, some are fixed and some are rotatable. Okay. So, it also includes input transition as well as output transition se sections, which provides low standing wave ratio connections with respect to the rectangular waveguides. Okay. Now, let's see the structure. See. The two fixed circular waveguide sections are identical in all respects, okay? Each attached to a transition and each consists of a piece of circular waveguide. Everything we are discussing about the structure, what we have seen just now, okay? So, two fixed circular waveguide sections are identical in all aspects and each other, uh, each is attached to uh, a transition and each consists of a piece circular waveguide with a lossy dielectric plate or a plat lying horizontal to it. Plat is nothing but the uh, uh, rectangular plates which you see over here. Okay. So, these are the plates inserted. Some will be like a fixed section. Okay. And some will be like the rotatable section. Okay. So, all these are horizontally placed in that particular uh, parts. Now, in middle, there exists a rotatable circular waveguide. Okay, so this is a rotatable circular waveguide. So, which you see over here, this is a rotatable circular waveguide, okay, in which the directly plate can be placed in any angle by rotating the waveguide section. All these plates by rotating, if that particular uh, cylindrical shape is got rotated, that particular dielectric plate which is inserted horizontally also rotates. Okay. So, within that particular waveguide section. Okay. So, this is how the arrangement is made. Okay. So, both the ends will be having input transition as well as output transition. And besides that, they will be having fixed section at either uh, uh, both the input transition as well as output transition and in between there is an important section called rotatable section and all these particular fixed section as well as rotatable section there is a dielectric uh, plates which are horizontally fixed to you. This is the structure how a rotatory vane structure okay will be vane attenuator will have okay. Now these plates so whatever the plates we have talking about the horizontal place. These plates attenuates the wave traveling and the amount of attenuation being depending on the property of the material which is used or the property of the material of the plate which is cut. Okay, whatever the material that particular plates inserted in that particular sections are uh, made of based on that particular property, the attenuation, the amount of attenuation also depends. Okay, and the dimensions of the slab and also the angle between the plate of E vector of the wave. Okay. And based on the dimensions as well as the E vector of the wave, which we are giving as an input. Okay. All these are taken into considerations for an attenuation to be considered. Okay. So, this is somewhat little bit complex. Now, when E vector of the wave is normal, okay, the plate does not attenuate the wave. Okay. And as it attenuates the wave, the E vector is parallel. Okay. Now, initially, the E vector, which is given as an input, is normal and there is no attenuation. Okay. If at all we consider that there is some sort of attenuation, we can say that the particular vector E is parallel to the plates inserted in that particular bodies. Okay. So, in the present plates, uh, so, in the present, uh, present case, the lengths of the plates are selected in such a way that after traveling past the plates with the E vector parallel, that means what we are talking about the E vector parallel, the E vector is parallel to the traveling uh, 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 plates. Okay. So, 
the plates included horizontally uh, fixed into the waveguides those are parallel with the e vector okay so that means we can say that the there is some sort of attenuation happening and the wave amplitude will become insignificant okay now it can be shown that okay so if at all the e vector is parallel to the plates of this particular rotatory vane attenuator it can be shown that the wave will be undergone an amount of attenuation given by a is equal to a is nothing but the attenuation is equal to 10 log 1 by cos power 4 theta m okay where theta m is the angle of the rotatable section uh, which got rotated from the horizontal uh, waveguides okay